Maybe the fourth time's the charm? This week, Apple released a new crop of MacBook Pros that they claim address the keyboard problems that have plagued MacBook Pros since the introduction of the butterfly keyboard in 2015 with the redesigned MacBook. While Apple has mostly solved the dust issue by switching to a more repairable design that allows you to remove the individual keycaps, the latest computers still have issues, from key strikes that don't register to double and triple key strikes. Apple has said that this updated MacBook Pro does not have a redesigned butterfly keyboard, but rather a changed material in the keyboard mechanism. With an exceptionally vague statement like that, we decided to try to find out what changes Apple actually made. And for that, we needed to consult with some experts. My name is Eric Beaton. I am the lab tech here for the materials engineering department at Cal Poly. So we deal with materials. We help determine what's going wrong with materials. We help improve materials. We will do failure analysis, we deal with corrosion. So when you're designing something and need to select a material for, for an application, typically it's a materials engineer that you're gonna to come to. This is our FTIR. This is used for identifying polymers. It uh, uses an IR uh, light, and it's basically shining an IR light onto the surface of the polymer, and the functional groups of the molecules that make up the polymer will absorb that light in different amounts. Several layers make up the butterfly key, and we know one or more of them may have changed. Topping it off is the keycap, and below that is the butterfly mechanism that controls the key's motion. Below that, we have the dome switch cover supporting a flexible membrane that moves with the key, and then we get to the main character of the assembly, the metal dome switch. One or more of these layers may have been altered, and hopefully the FTIR scans can tell us what's changed within the dome switch cover. Uh, we've got the switch housing for the 2018 butterfly keyboard. I figure we'll start with that, and then see if we can spot any differences with the new version. You see that the peaks here are vastly different. So now these plastics are definitely different. I'm very confident that they are different plastics. Now we've got two different types of plastic involved, but we're going to need some more analysis. And since we also suspect that the metal dome switches have changed, we're going to need another expert. My name is David Niebuhr. My focus is on metallurgy and failure analysis. So we have the switch cover. So you have the two switch covers, and so. From looking at them under the microscope, the first thing you can see is that the polymers are definitely different. Even if you didn't know for that for a fact, the left pol the old polymer on the 2018 is more opaque. The polymer on the right is less opaque, but it's it seems it, it is a little thicker, if not more robust than the left. And then after looking at the results that you obtain using a FTIR. Um, it identified or it, it surmised that the, the older one, the 2018, is the polyacetylene and the new one is a nylon. It's a polyamide, which is just a general term for nylon, and it's a polyamide 6. It makes sense that they would uh, go to a nylon if they were having issues with the, uh, the prior polymer, if it was uh, um, somehow not performing, ripping, or just failing in any way, allowing, because it looks like it's meant to form some kind of a, a barrier there to keep any kind of moisture out. And I know from experience that nylons are fairly robust as polymers go from a structural standpoint. They have good mechanical strength as far as polymers go. And now we can take a look at the metal dome switches. From looking at it, the weak point is probably at the, the tabs on the outside. Over time, these little tabs here would fatigue because you can imagine is as it put is pushed down like that, and then it changes back, 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 back. Then likely there's going to be cracks forming at these outer lines here. What I would say is if you wanted to compare the two just side by side, again, left being the 2018, the right being the 2019, is that structurally they look identical. I don't see any differences in either the process they were made or in the uh, actual uh, thickness of the material or even the bending of the of the tabs on the end or the travel for that matter. It looks like the travel is identical. I would think that if they were to go to the trouble of making any kind of uh, design change in terms of the travel, it would be something that you would be able to see because the, these to me are identical in terms of their height. As I said earlier, I looked at the two materials. 
they are identical in shape. So perhaps they thought, well, maybe the spring is fine and we just need to protect it better. And instead of changing the spring itself, they're just gonna to try to protect the spring. Or the other mode of thought would be, well, we're gonna protect it also, and we're also gonna change the material. So it could be a twofold thing. And my gut is they're probably doing both because they're probably saying that this is a big enough issue that we're gonna attack it from every direction we can. If you were Apple, what would you do? <laughs> would, would you keep chasing it or would you give up entirely and try something less failure prone? Oh, uh, well see, that is a very hard question to ask an engineer. Because as an engineer, we can always make it better. But it takes time and tests and as a company, you don't want your customers doing your testing for you, which sounds like sort of almost what's going on right now. Um, so, I mean, if I was an Apple engineer, I'd be saying, yeah, let us give us more resources to fix this problem, because this is a cool design. If I was Apple marketing, um, I would be saying, no, we don't want our customers having this issue anymore. Let's go back to what we know works. Don't fix what ain't broken.